how does the inward listing exemption rule impact on structured products? So the South African Reserve Bank exchange control regulations uh, are, are still uh, in place. Yes, they're being sort of relaxed as time goes on, but the inward listing exemption uh, for individuals um, and corporates still exists. And basically what that means is there's two things. There's a requirement on the, an issuing bank where we reference offshore indices to list that particular instrument in order to comply with uh, XCON reporting. Um, but there is a exemption that applies for everyone save for institutional investors that says if you purchase an inwardly listed uh, instrument, that instrument does not form part of your offshore allowance. So uh, there is no need um, to, to go and have to go and asset swap money offshore or to go through the uh, process of applying to the Reserve Bank to, to take money offshore. Uh, inward listing exemption qualifies as a local asset despite the fact that it might reference an offshore index like the S&P 500. So it's quite useful for, uh, for let's call it, um, larger investors who have actually tapped out on their offshore allowance. Um, and I think that is a mil uh, 11 million Rand if you include the 1 million Rand kind of travel allowance. So anyone who's uh, wanting to take more than 11 million Rand out each year um, an inward listed uh, instrument is quite useful. Um, and then there are those entities that can't get money offshore, uh, but want offshore exposure. Again, an inward listed instrument uh, would be very um, useful to that type of investor. Institutional investors, however, uh, are not, um, uh, do not benefit from this particular exemption. So if they issue, if they bought a ABSA issued note linked to the S&P 500, in ZAR, that would be seen as part of the offshore uh, limits, not part of the local.